back again with csir and grf solutions so today i'm going to solve previous year questions from csir as well as gate and net and jam 2 so without wasting a time let's move the first question is if, if the poisons ratio for typical rock is 0.3 then the ratio of primary to the secondary wave velocity will be so first of all what is poisons ratio poisons ratio is the ratio of transverse strain to the axial strain okay now the Poisson's ratio is given here that is 0.3 and the formula uh, which shows relation between P wave velocity and S wave velocity with the Poisson ratio is this one this is so here we can see that Vp by Vs is equal to under root 1 minus sigma by 1 by 2 minus sigma so we have to just put the value that is Poisson's ratio value 0.3 here in the sigma and then uh, we get the answer so the right answer here is under root 3.5 that is b b is the right answer so it is previous year get questions moving to the next question uh, a sun synchronous satellite is at an altitude of 300 km and the spectrophotometer makes an angular coverage angle of 12 degree swath that is gfov now what is GFOV? GFOV means ground field of view of a satellite in kilometers. So uh, okay. So suppose this is MSL mean sea level and here is the satellite having a sensor that is called spectrometer. It makes a coverage of some distance that we have to find. But the angle between the coverage or a swath is 12 degree and it is at the 300 kilometer that means it's a polar orbital uh, polar orbiting satellite so let's solve the formula of gfov is h into tan theta where h is given 300 kilometer and tan theta is 12 degrees so uh, the tan 12 degree value is 0 0.2125 then we multiply we come to know the answer so the right answer is 63.76 now moving to the next question if the tangents of Young's modulus at 50% of uniaxial compressor strength and the modulus ratio of the rock are given as by 60 GPA and 50 G, uh, 500 GPA respectively. So the tangent of Young's modulus is 60 GPA and mo uh, modulus ratio is 500 GPA respectively. The uniaxial compressive strength of the rock is in MPA so firstly we have to convert this GPA into MPA so the given tangents of Young's modulus is 60 GPA then we multiplied this with 1000 to change into mega Pascals so it becomes 60,000 of mega Pascal the modulus ratio is given as 500 GPA so according to formula uniaxial compressive strength is equal to tangent of Young's modulus by modulus ratio so 60,000 by 500 that means uh, uniaxial compressive strength becomes 1.2 MPa mega Pascals, x of 20 mega Pascals. Now moving to the next question. A vener array with 60 meter spacing between current electrodes is placed over an inhomogeneous ground. If the measured potential difference and the current flow in a subsurface are 10 millivolt and 5 milliampere respectively then the apparent resistivity will be so here given that 60 meter is the space between two current electrodes so don't confuse with the potential electrodes right so if we see the picture this these two are that is a and d are the current electrodes while p and e are the potential electrodes and this is the vener array that means the space between each electrode must be same so that's why we have a a a okay that is a b is equal to b c is equal to c d now according to the vener uh, array the formula of apparent resistivity is equal to 2 pi a delta b by delta i now this a is the same the distance between the electrodes okay now a d is the current electrode is spacing 60 meters so a becomes 60 by 3 because there are three a's so we divide and we uh, the a value is 20 meter now 
and given that delta V is equal to 10 millivolt and delta I is equal to 5 milliampere. So now we put the values in the given formula 2 into 3.19 into 20, 20 is A by 10 by 5. So the answer becomes 251.2 ohm meter. So the right answer is 251.2 ohm meters. Moving to the next question. Assuming the earth to be an ideal sphere, the volume percentage of the core relative to the volume percentage of the earth. So in this question, you have to know the radius of the earth and the depth at which the mantle is present. So we know that if it is a sphere and the volume of the sphere is 4 by 3 pi r cube. So the radius of the earth is 6400, right? But in the case of core, we subtract this 6400 minus the depth of the mantle. So we get the depth uh, or radius of the core. So just put the value of uh, volume of the core by the volume of earth into 100. And then uh, the answer becomes 16.35%. So that is 16.35% is the volume of the core with respect to the earth. Now moving to the next question. So X-ray beam of a wavelength is 1.5. 541 angstrom is incident on a cubic crystal having a lattice spacing of 4 angstrom. What will be the, its 2 theta value on X-ray diffractometer? So to solve this problem, we have to have knowledge of Bragg's formula. That is n lambda is equal to 2d sin theta. Now the given thing is lambda 1.541 angstrom d that is difference 4 angstrom. Uh, and then lattice, the, this is D means lattice spacing, the difference in the lattice. And then we have to find 2 theta. So here theta is given, right? Firstly, we find the theta and then we multiply it with the 2. Here in this case, n is equal to 1. Now just put the values in this formula and then we get the answer that is 0 0.193. This is sine theta. Now for theta, it becomes 11.20 and we have to find 2 theta, right? Here it's 2 theta value. So we multiply this theta by 2, uh, then we get the answer that is 22.20. Now moving to the next question. The energy released during an earthquake of a magnitude 7 in a Richter scale is how many times more than, the, than that of the magnitude of 5? So uh, he, uh, here it is asking about magnitude, right? And not about the like... Uh, not about the amplitude, it's a energy thing. So don't confuse with the amplitude. Amplitude changes by 10 times on every increase in the value of a scale. While in the case of energy, it is around 32 times or you can say more precisely 31.6. So the explanation is the difference of the magnitude of 1 is equivalent to the factor of 10 to the power m 3 by 2. Here m is the difference in the magnitudes. Uh, in the energy terms, it is equivalent to 31.6. Generally, it is 32 times. So, the difference in the magnitudes is 7 minus 5. It's given that 7, then 5 difference. So, it becomes 2. Now, the energy release formula, we already know that 10 to the power m uh, into 3 ka power 2, 3 by 2. So, we put the value of m here and then it becomes 10 to the power 3. That is 1000 times. Also, in this case, the amplitude is also changes with 100 times. Here, since uh, the difference between the magnitude is 2, that means if one increase, uh, there is an uh, increase in one amplitude, uh, one magnitude, it becomes 10. In two magnitude, it becomes 100. So, if they ask about the amplitude, it becomes 100. If they ask about the energy, it becomes 1000 times. Okay. So, moving to the next question. Now, the forset cross beds in a horizontal sandstone have an altitude of north 20 degree east yeah 22 degree southeast it indicates paleo current direction towards so we have to find the paleo current direction so the important concept behind it is to get the paleo current direction we have to know first the deep direction so always paleo current direction lies in the direction of deep direction so what we do is we plot uh, north uh, north south east west line 
and then uh, uh, we do like firstly we draw an uh, strike of this bed so here given the strike of the bed is not 20 degrees so what we do is just put the strike from uh, north that is tw towards the east 20 degree so and we already know that deep is at the 90 degree to the strike that means if it is 20 degree so uh, perpendicular to this strike we have the deep in this direction okay now if it's if it is 20 it becomes 70 and it becomes 20 since the angle between deep and strike is 90 degree so the let's check the answer the option C is right okay why if you see the angle between this south line and the deep line is around 70 degree so it becomes south 70 degree east so the right answer is C the only important concept is always uh, try to understand the paleo current direction is in the direction of deep direction okay so that's it for the today hope you like it Please do like, comment and subscribe my channel. Thank you.